Hi, I'm Nick Schimmick, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northeast Wisconsin. We're getting towards the end of May, and uh, we've actually been able to have some really great planting progress so far throughout much of, much of the area where we've had beautiful soil conditions through the first half of May. Um, it's been relatively cool, however, so a lot of our crop that was planted in that first half of May has yet to emerge or is getting close to emerge, but a lot of it's still underground. Um, on average, we've accumulated about 80 growing degree units from May 1st um, throughout Northeast Wisconsin. So we're looking at soybean emergence that, we're, that takes roughly 90 to 130 GDUs to emerge. We're getting pretty close in some of our areas. I'm probably starting to see some of that cracking just starting to go on as the hypercoil is starting to get, just, just, just starting to get out of that soil surface. Um, however, throughout the last couple of days, we've had some excessive rainfalls throughout the area, four, five, and even reports of up to six inches, uh, which has created some flooding. And of course, there's going to be a little bit of ponding in some of these areas, um, depending on, on what those can, uh, how much we really got and what some of those soil conditions are. So the question has been, well, you know, now that we have some of these excessive rains, our crop hasn't emerged out of the ground yet, what does this mean for seed viability and those plant viability and how, how long can our crop withstand that? So I think an important process to be able to understand first is, well, let's go out and see where our, our, our seed is at in that germination emergence process to be able to determine if that plant's um, what where our field is at in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of growth and development. So if we're looking at soybean development, the first thing that we're going to see once we plant that plant that seed is we're going to see it immediately start to imbibe or absorb water. It's going to absorb about 50% of its weight in water. After about this is going to be completed relatively quickly, 24 to 48 hours. After that's completed, the cell division is going to start to occur, and one of the first structures we're going to see is that radical root emerge from the seed coat followed by the hypocotyl. The hypocotyl is going to be that, that stem that grows towards the soil surface. Um, it's going to form a crook. This crook is going to pull up the two cotyledons. Um, these cotyledons are important because they're a food source for that plant, um, that early developing seedling. It's also going to protect that growing point if it's, as it's being grown to, or pulled towards the soil surface. So as that hypocotyl starts to emerge, that crook starts to be pulled up towards the soil surface, it's gonna straighten and, it's gonna, and the cotyledons are gonna to start to open up, exposing that growing point. So um, like I mentioned, it's gonna take us roughly 90 to 130 growing degree units for us to be able to see this emerge, um, depending on kind of what some of those management conditions are like. Um, however, we're getting pretty close throughout much of the area to start seeing some of these soybeans start cracking that soil surface. So the next question, like I mentioned, now we got some of this, this flooding going on, some of this ponding is, well, what can our crop take and how long is it gonna be able to take some of that? And ideally it's gonna, or roughly it's gonna take us two to four days so that crop can survive underneath some of these saturated and ponding conditions. Um, of course, that flooding, what that's gonna create is in more of an anaerobic environment. There's not gonna be enough oxygen and oxygen's gonna be used up relatively quickly. There's not gonna be enough there to support that plant. And it's gonna start, um, and it's not gonna be able to perform its normal functions and it's gonna start to, start to, um, start to die out. And there's gonna be a time frame of two to four days because it's gonna depend a little bit on what those conditions are like. If it's cool and cloudy and, and, and if that water's not staying and it's moving, um, that seed has more of a chance, has a longer time window to be able to survive. It's not going to be respiring quite as quick. Those microbes aren't going to be using up water quite as much, or the oxygen quite as much underneath that water. So it's going to extend that window out to four days or so. However, if it's hot, sunny, the water is sitting stagnant, more than likely that window is going to be down to more like one or two days. So it's going to depend a little bit on what, uh, what our weather conditions are like after that. So what I encourage you to do is wait a little bit, give it some time for let that water recede, and then go out there and assess what those plants are looking like. Pull out plants in the in the unaffected area, pull up, pull up plants in that, dig up plants in that affected area, and see what that, that tissue is looking like on, on both of those plants. If that tissue is, is white and firm, that's a good sign, showing that, that those seeds are, that plant is still alive, um, those seeds are gonna make it. However, you're starting to see some brown, squishy, starting to see some decaying going on within that tissue. Um, underneath those ponded areas is showing that those plants aren't going to be able to pull through. Um, then we can perform, uh, and then depending on the size of the area or how many plants were able to survive, then a replant uh, or a decision can be made after that. The other two concerns to have with, with ponding and some of these saturated conditions are, are one, it's more of a favorable environment for seedling diseases to be able to infect that plant, makes that plant more susceptible to some of our soybean or some of our soil pathogens. And then two, crusting is more of a, more of a potential as well once that soil dries out, can form that hard, hard, that hard crust and affect some of this emergence that we're seeing many of these soybean plants still below the soil surface. So that crusting can be impactful because it might pull off some of these cotyledons, making it hard for those cotyledons to be pulled through the soil surface. If we lose one cotyledon, it's not much of a concern. The yield impact is probably not going to be hit quite as much. However, if we see both cotyledons be pulled off, yield impact is roughly going to be hit 2 to 7%. 
So um, hopefully crusting in these areas is one thing to look at. Hopefully it's not as bad, but there's some ways to alleviate that as well um, for starting to see large areas at, uh, of crusting with a rotary hoe or trying to break up some of that soil surface, but be cautious not to damage that hypocotyl as it's merging towards the, towards the soil surface as well. Thank you. Good luck the rest of this planting season. Uh, I encourage you to follow Pioneer Agronomy on YouTube if you want to look up any more agronomy topics. If you have any questions, please reach out to your nearest Pioneer sales professional. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.